Good morning. I'm James, and behind the camera is John. We're with James L. Taylor Manufacturing and Cameron Automation, and behind me is a Cameron Automation Quick Chop. In fact, right here is the pusher assembly. This is what scans the board and then pushes the board forward through the chop assembly that actually does the cutting of the board. Let's take a look at the pusher and the sensors that are on. This is the pusher assembly. This moves back and forth down the length of the machine, measuring the start of the board and any crayon marks that have been placed on it, and recording their location so we can optimize the board's geometry for the parts that we're trying to make. There's three sensors on it. Here is a sensor for the servo drive that allows it to home to this metal block. That gives us a fixed position for the servo to start out from whenever we start up the machine. Then there's a length sensor over here. This is actually a laser distance sensor. It's measuring the distance from the sensor to whatever's behind it. We're using changes in that distance to detect the presence of a board against the fence and on the table. This can be in two different positions. We have it up here on this outrigger. That allows us to better detect and measure longer bowed pieces of lumber. But there's also another mount position for it here where it can detect rip stock that lays flat against the fence. This gives more sensitivity for running thinner pieces of lumber. Then over here is a fluorescent crayon sensor. It uses an ultraviolet beam to detect the reflection and fluorescence of the crayon marks. And then those are recorded based on the servo drive's position for us to know where those marks are. Here's the UV crayon sensor. It looks for these crayon marks placed on pieces of lumber. And it detects them with an ultraviolet light that it shines on them and then looks for its fluorescence. To set its threshold, hold down the T plus button until the light flashes on top. That LED display will show you a live readout of what the sensor is showing. And then place a board with a crayon mark underneath it. You should be able to see when the crayon mark is underneath it because the number will jump up significantly. This sensor maxes out at 5.0. Once the crayon mark is underneath it, hold the T plus sensor until the flashing light stops. To set up a new sensor, first move the pusher to its home position. This is close to the chop area. You can see here we've got the home block next to it. It's important to do the initial sensor setup here because this portion of the saw table usually is a bit shinier and more reflective than the rest of it because this is where boards are more frequently passing over. That adds a background reflection that the sensor has to be calibrated for. To access the sensor's internal configuration, first hold the P minus button. You'll then get into the calibration menu where the first step is that U3 setting. You want to scroll through these settings with the T plus button until you land on U3. This sets the LED intensity to its maximum. Then use the P minus button to get to the next setting. This is the hysteresis setting. We want to minimize the hysteresis of the, set of the sensor and set it to zero. To use this, to do this, hit the T plus button until H zero is set. And then hit the P minus button to go to the next setting. This is the default output of the sensor. Here we have it set for normally open. This is what you'd want the sensor to be set at. If you hit the T plus option, you can scroll through the different options for it, normally closed and normally open. Leave it at normally open. Next is the pause setting. This allows the sensor to hold for an extended time once it detects a crayon mark. We do not want to do this. This is to allow slower PLCs to detect marks, but the PLC on the Quick Chop is plenty fast enough. To go through the different settings, hit T plus, and you want to scroll through them until you get to P zero then hit the P minus button to go to the next setting. This is the null offset. This sets the background reflection. You want to set this without a board behind it on the shiniest part of the table. This is why we move it towards the home position where normally the table's been polished or worn by boards moving back and forth on the machine. To set the null offset, hold the T plus button until the light flashes on the sensor. You can see there it's at the background of five. Now, hit the P minus button to go to the last setting. This is the gain of the sensor. You want to set this to R2, which sets the gain to 10 instead of 1. 
To do that, plus the T plus button until you've reached the R2 setting. This is the last setting, and after this, you can hold the P minus button to return to the main sensor screen. You can see, since we calibrated the null offset, the background reading is now zero, as it's calibrated to the table background. Now let's try putting this crayon mark underneath it. And you can see that maxes out the sensor, and the output light comes on. This would let our PLC know that there's a crayon mark underneath the sensor. You can also manually adjust the threshold by raising and lowering it. Lowering it will make it more sensitive. Raising it will make it less sensitive. Generally, we recommend a setting between one and two and a half. This one's currently set at one and a half. This is the home sensor. This is what the servo drive uses to get its initial position. Before the machine is homed, you can actually push the pusher back and forth. And you can see as it goes over that metal block behind it, the sensor turns on. This is how the servo drive gets its position. This is the length sensor. This measures the distance from the sensor itself to whatever its background is. In this case, it's the corner of the fence and the table. And then it determines if anything's come in between it and that position. And then it uses that change of distance to measure the beginning and end of the board. To set its threshold, you will need a 1 8 to 3 16 strip of lumber and a 7 8 or 1 inch square piece of lumber. You start by putting the thin strip of lumber right on the fence against the table. This raises the background so that it has uh, less sensitivity to dust or other things that may settle against the fence. With that in place, you hit the set button. You just tap it once. This is the button right on the side of the sensor there. You should see it flash set after that. And then you replace it with the thicker piece of lumber. This is kind of indicative of what your target is going to be for the sensor. With that in place, you tap set again. You should get a number flashing. That's your threshold. When the measurement's above that, it will trigger the sensor to turn on, showing that there's a board in position. And when it's below that, it will turn off, showing that it's reached the end or it's at the beginning of the board. As you can see, when I pull that piece of board out, that light turns off. That amber light on the end of the sensor is indicative of the output of the sensor. With a board in place, it should be on. When it's not there, it should be off. Keep in mind, the sensor may also be in this location, where it will be seeing top down onto the table. That gives more sensitivity for thinner stock, but less sensitivity for bowed stock, where it may see the end of the board before it reaches the end because the board's bowed away from the fence. Let's go over how to set the length sensor to factory defaults. First, you have to press the hold button down while tapping the up button five times. It should say RST for reset. Use the up or down button to scroll to yes, and then press the down button to select it. This will reinitialize the sensor with the output options. You need to select PNP, just so the PLC can understand it. Once PNP is selected, hold the set button for three seconds. Once that's done, the sensor is in its factory default settings and things will have to be changed before it works properly. All right, now we're going to go into the advanced settings. To do that, you hold the down button for three seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. The first setting is the speed of the sensor. This is its response time to changes. You want to set that to HSP or high speed so we can detect changes in the board as fast as possible. Once on this setting, you hit the up button. It's set to HSP, but let's just scroll through the other potential settings. There's a 10 millisecond response. 50 millisecond response, and then the high speed, which is what we want. If you hit the down, you'll return back to speed, and then hit it again, and you'll get to the next setting. That's delay. We want that set to off. See there, it's set to off. The other settings are and, off delay, and SHT or one shot. But again, you want to see it say OFF for off. When you hit down again, it'll advance to the delay setting. We do not 
want another delay. So we're going to scroll past that. Then we have external input. That's that IN setting. If you hit up, you should see it should be set to off by default. The other potential settings for this are set, LOF, and ADJ for adjust. Again, we want it to be off, so once it says off, hit down again to return to the IN or external input setting, and then press down again to get to the DSC or descend setting. We want that to be set to off as well. Um, so scroll past the other options. We're going to go one, three, and then off, and then hit down here to return back to DSC, and next to the hold function. This should be off as well. It is by default, but you might also see it set to peak hold or bottom hold. But again, keep scrolling with that up button until you get to off. Then hit down to return to hold, and then again to get to the shift function. We want this on, so hit the up button, make sure on is selected and not off, and then hit down again to return to that setting. Next is the clamp function. We want this to be off as well. So hit up until it says off, and now we're at the display. We want the display to be on, so we'll leave it on on. This just shows whatever the sensor is reading on the screen. If you hit down, it should now say the end of your system parameters, and the sensor should be set up. You will have to reset the threshold after doing this. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Cameron Automation machinery tips and tricks.